Welcome to another episode of the PSVR Chat Show. I'm your host today, AJ from PSVR Underground. Today we are here to talk with Anna Ribeiro, the creative director of Pixel Rip 1995, as well as Ricardo Justus, the CEO of Arvory Immersive Experiences. Pixel Rip 1995 will be coming out today for Oculus, Oculus Rift, Viveport, Steam, and Springboard, with PSVR releasing at a slightly later date. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us, Anna and Ricardo. It's truly a pleasure getting to sit here and chat with both of you today. We're really honored to have you, that you have taken the time to sit here with us. Uh, I want to take this time to introduce you to the people from the PSVR community that are here today to speak with you and the show crew that have created this wonderful, wonderful room. Uh, today we have the following YouTubers here. We've got Will from That Guy Is Will VR, Justin from Just Incredible VR, Betty from Creeper Betty PSVR, and Ryan from the VR Grid, and Jason, our producer, from the Handyman Can VR. I'd also like to introduce to you the amazing and talented artists who have worked for, on this room for you. Uh, we've got Noctado, Golden Cupcakes, Yuki VR, Dorky Awkward, Clarity VR. Yeah! Woo-hoo! 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 It's amazing! Mary Essa and Wonder Rob. <laughs> so... I couldn't help. We clapping the controllers for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> just don't break them. Just don't break them. Just don't break them. We need you to keep doing amazing work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Take care of your controllers. Um, so I couldn't help but notice you brought some of your team here that have worked on Pixel Rip 1995, and I would love Woo. to get to know who they are and what their role was with helping create the game. If you wouldn't mind sharing. So, uh, first of all, this is Ricardo, uh, the CEO of Arbery. Hey. Hello. <laughs> hey, Ricardo. Thank, thank you so much for this, guys. I'm, this is amazing what you guys created in here. It's incredible. Uh, we're floored. It's beautiful. <laughs> we have over here, so uh, we have a, a writer, Barbara, from you. She, oh. She's a new member of the team. The game... It really shines oh, now that cool. we have a writer in the team, the amazing narrative. Ah. Um, we have Fabio, who is uh, the programmer. We have two hardcore programmers here, Yay. actually. We have Fabio, we have Roberto Plinio, <laughs> we have yeah. Rodrigo Blanco, who did uh, the art and all this poster over here, yeah. the original and not this one. <laughs> but he's our yeah. lead uh, pixel artist. Then yeah, no, uh, I am the creative director of the game. And um, mm-hmm. my name is Anna. <laughs> I'm sorry, that I, I forgot. Pedro. Pedro. I, sorry, sorry, I forgot. So Pedro is here too, <laughs> the game designer of the game. So cool. Pedro is actually working on 1989 too. So some of the team here, so cool. Blanco, oh, cool. Rodrigo Blanco and Pedro also work in 1989 too. <laughs> well, it's, it's a lot of people. I'm trying right. to recognize them through the helmets, but it's, it's different. <laughs> <laughs> you don't you don't wear those around the office at all. <laughs> well, she she does she does she does. Oh yes. <laughs> I saw her in a, uh, at E3. Yeah, she around. was making everybody put on like a costume and a helmet. No, I would love to. Yeah, that's that. Maybe when we started doing this in VR, maybe next uh, next step is reality, right? When the world comes back to. Rio, we should yeah. all dress up as dots. Yeah. <laughs> the yes. cosplayer team. Yes. <laughs> I would love to see that. Well, thank you so, so much for joining us once again since uh, the launch of Pixel Rip 1989, which we all loved. It was a wonderful love yes, letter to all of us retro gamers and, you know, best of both worlds in VR. Um, and thank you to the team who's also joining us for the first time today. Now, let's get to Pixel Ripped 1995. And I know the community would love to know more about it, but first I've got a question of my own, if you wouldn't mind answering this one for me. The first game you played, a student, trying not to get caught by the teachers while on your gear kit, Mm. obviously taking a lot of inspiration from your own personal experiences. This time around, you're playing as David. How does David become involved, and what obstacles will he have to avoid and does he have any relation to you or any of your other personal life experiences? Um, so, um, 1989, it, I got some experience, personal experience. Also, the team working with me also got some um, uh, of their life experience, too. Uh, it wasn't just my personal experience. Uh, 
of course, there's a big influence because it was a student project. It was more like I was kind of more a small team. But 1995, um, it's um, we we all got ideas from our childhood. Uh, we sit together, Ricardo, and everyone got to put like on their own personal experience, and we kind of made this together. We want David to uh, represent these memories that all of us had in all, all of us remember having in our childhood like so everyone ricardo had like many people like ricardo remember having to play video games in the nighttime right they have to hide mm -hmm. the game from mm. their parents and we want yeah. david to represent everyone and it, it's not like just my personal experience but everyone in the team i think barbara can also uh compliment more uh, she's uh, the writer of this do you want to <laughs> talk about this yeah. this too well uh in 1990 you were playing at a classroom but right now in 1995 mm -hmm. david is actually home for the winter holidays so you're actually playing alongside your family your neighbors so it's more of a personal experience uh, mm -hmm. the obstacles that he has to face is more like his overprotective mother who doesn't like video games his neighbor who is always trying to one-up him mm -hmm. at the video games mm -hmm. so it's more about his personal life than my school or another place. I love that. I mean, yeah, I we we didn't have... we didn't work uh, we didn't work much on the narrative in 1989 as we wanted to, and now that we have Barbara in the team, uh, we could really explore the characters. So we, mm -hmm. we explore much more David, the parents, and like the world of David, and also the world of Dot. And we 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 explore much more the both worlds and the connection with these two characters. And I think that's that's one of the best things about 1995 comparing to 1989, which we did explore mm -hmm. much. Who is the teacher? Who is Nicola in in the classroom? The, the, there was not much uh, going on deep about yeah. the characters. The the character arcs in the in the first game were much more straightforward, whereas in this game, there each character, even the secondary characters, have full character arcs and, and things like that. So it's really interesting. That's excellent. I mean, and I think it goes without saying, I mean, somehow you guys do this every time and we all have a relatable experience. Something, somebody has something to relate to in these characters, in this world you create. We've all been through these different scenarios of uh, staying up late. Um, so I also want to uh, go ahead and turn over some questions to the community. Uh, and, you know, uh, maybe you guys can answer for them, starting with Justin, if you please go ahead. Uh, sure, yeah. Um, so in Pixel Rip 1995, I, I know it's coming to Quest and Rift, Steam, Viveport, PlayStation, basically all the headsets everywhere. Uh, what kind of obstacles did you guys uh, run into when trying to develop on multiple devices at once? Uh, a lot of uh, I must say that we start from day one so day one we had okay let's make the game run on the quest and we had since the first build we focus okay let's build on the quest let's build for PlayStation for so we had all these headsets since day one and I, uh, yeah, it, I think that's a big challenge for a small team that wanna yeah, even 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 before we even in the beginning, you have to be approved to be able to be on the quest, right? So uh, when we started, we weren't even sure we were going to be approved, right? So uh, there's that. But uh, for again, it's a question of how do you prioritize things, right? Because it's really hard. Because especially when you're coming up to launch uh, and you're trying to do this launch at the same time multiple platforms and things like that, it gets really challenging. So uh, yeah, it's it's not easy because each platform, especially on the side of QA, has very different in processes mm -hmm. to submit the game, right? So it's very challenging on that respect. And then again, it's a small team. Uh, so how do you test multiple versions on multiple devices? And right now it's even harder for us because we're not at the office. So uh, who has the Vive? Who has the the dev playstation dev kit who has you know so now it's even <laughs> even harder with, in that regard yeah you know? we had to kind of send oh, the, like uh one person this one person going to the office to get all this headset and then distributing to people that need a headset it's kind of <laughs> so we have like mm. here at plinio and and fabio fabio the other day got in a vibe uh because we need to do some implementation on the index so it was like right. okay get him this special equipment and it's it's really hard 
uh, we have, it's already hard to make a game for all these platforms. And in the middle mm. of the world that we're living now, it's just add another layer oh, of uh, challenge. Yeah. But um, answering uh, about what other things we did in the game, uh, we kind of did a, deci a decision of making the game a style, the, the art style in the beginning, we decided let's make it more cartoony, uh, the 3D in the game. Uh, it's a little bit more stylized. Uh, we did this decision right in the beginning. If Blanco wants to complement that, um, you want to talk a little bit? Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah sure. Um, at, at first, we wanted to make the distinction between like the in-game stuff and the real-world stuff like very, uh, uh, very big, you know. So we were going for a hype like more realistic. But then afterwards, we realized that uh, given the, the the limitations, the graphical limitations. It would be much much harder for us to go on a realistic uh, path so we decided to stylize everything and make it more cartoony and in the end i think it gave more of a personality to the characters because we 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 enhanced them in some way towards uh the the visual aspect that would complement their uh, personalities you know um and that turned out to be a, a really great decision uh uh, for us, you know, uh, so it was it, it was convenient in in terms of the technical aspects, uh, but also it complemented all of the the wonderful job that uh, Barbara did with our narrative, and uh, the game has like really really funny and comedic moments that I think the the character design uh, actually complemented that, you know. That's excellent. Yeah, yeah. Like and, the, and the Saturday morning cartoons of video games. I'm so happy to have the team together because they help a lot to answer the questions, and it's so good to yeah. actually get someone from each and, area. And, it's amazing. Yeah, and then maybe Plino and Fabio can speak to the challenge that it was in terms of optimization. You know, like I, I mm. just to run Definitely. things on the quest on a on a on on the necessary frame rates. You need to keep 72 frame rates, right? So you need to, uh, and then we have. We have scenes that you are happen in moving cars and things like that, you know, so it was a big challenge. <laughs> yeah, uh, one of the biggest challenges is that especially PlayStation and Quest uh, were behaving in different ways uh, with our game. So we had to do kind of two optimizations at once because they, they, we were facing completely op opposite um, results in them. So... Um, it took us some weeks uh, and some, <laughs> how can I say, a little bit sacrifices <laughs> and a lot of headaches. <laughs> blood, blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's where games come from. Yeah, according to everybody, it's so easy to just make the VR game. You can just take any game and put it into VR. Yeah, <laughs> and really so because we want to know. Well, let everyone know the struggles and all the hardship that you guys mm -hmm. have to face mm -hmm. and just to bring us entertainment so it really does mean a lot mm -hmm. um does. jason you uh would you go ahead uh, with the next question please is there anything specific with the psvr that's that was done differently than the, the quest or any of the other versions that you put out there for it? first thing that comes to my head is the camera we took all the camera effects um, but because we choose the game to be such so stylized, uh, since the beginning, we, we wanted, okay, let's make the game looking good in all the platforms. And then later we add the effects in the camera. It doesn't make that big a difference. Um, but maybe Plinio, do, do you remember anything the else that you want to talk about? The, control, the controls, yeah, the, the controls, controllers, right? controllers. Yeah. So, so, so the controllers are very ah, different course, yeah. because, yeah, because, uh, uh, on the on the on PC VR and on the Quest, you have both hands, right? And uh, mm -hmm. different from different from uh, from 1989. In this game, you can take your hand away from the the controller and interact with the environment, right? Oh. Um, with yeah, so so this that's very so in, in in 1989. You you had the Gear Kid fixed in your hand, and the interactions were with gaze. So you would like throw a spitball just by using your your sight. Right, but uh, uh, now you actually take your hand. That's why there's a this uh, this Nerf gun that you guys <laughs> that you guys made so well. Um, but um, but yeah, you, you you don't interact just with the Nerf gun. You actually pick up cartridges, turn on televisions, yes. do a bunch of things, right? Uh, uh, and and then of course on the PlayStation, uh, 
so on the on the quest and the rift you're holding you have both hands right so you just let go and the team made a, a really cool thing where you can if you pull your hand far away enough and the other stays still it like snaps out of the control so it's really natural it feels like you're just like letting go of the controller and it's super cool but then on the playstation that can't happen because you're holding the the gamepad right so in a way it's a more natural it's more immersive in a way because you're holding one controller right you're holding a gamepad in your real hands as well but then we had to figure out how to do the hand interaction and the team came up with a really really cool solution where you you press the trigger and then at when you press the trigger uh david lets go of the of the gamepad with his with the hand of the side of the trigger that you you pressed and then with the motion tracking you can move the hand and grab things, right? So it's really, it, it works really well and it's really clever. And uh, I'm really happy that the team came up with that. Right on. It that's was a that's great awesome. solution that to is... keep keep the control in your hand, which is the best thing about PlayStation because people are actually playing a game holding a controller. And we didn't yeah. want to lose that great feeling. Uh, and <laughs> the best thing about PlayStation, you can have that controller. So let's make it possible to grab things and still use the DualShock because uh, we didn't want to lose that and use the PlayStation sticks or something else because it's so cool to play a game holding a controller. And that's like the best thing about PlayStation. But this solution that we came with was amazing because we could keep the controller and grab things and still enjoy the game. But we did a lot of testing, right guys? We did like three or two tests. <laughs> yeah. that we, we, we got people in the company. We, we tried our stuff with the sticks too. Oh yeah, we actually yeah, tried. Uh, we uh, we actually tried uh, porting it to the to the move PlayStation Move. Mm. Yeah. yeah, but the the, no. the lack of uh, <laughs> the lack of a directional uh, uh, like an analog stick or a directional pad, even like it, it made it really challenging. So we gave up on that. It, it didn't, and the other solution I think is more elegant because when you're holding the gamepad, it's actually more even more immersive than the right. PC VR version because you're actually holding a gamepad in the game and. And it's pretty easy to like just let go and use your hand, so so it works pretty well. It seems like a fair trade off to me, and I love the fact that it seems you guys have added one more step of extra immersion to this one versus 1989, where a lot was controlled with your head. Um, really excited to try that out. Um, Will from that guy as well, VR. Uh, please go ahead with your question. So all of the mini games featured in Pixel Ripped are notorious for being inspired from what could be considered some of the most iconic classics. So my question is, what consoles are the mini games of Pixel Ripped 1995 based off of? Wow, I think this game we went uh, with a big variety. <laughs> we every level we kind of go in different genres, going different eras. Um, like we we try to go really abroad uh we reference like from top down games like um link to the past from because night the night is is really rich so this era it, there's a lot going on and we really want to put as much as we could so there's levels that you're playing a top down game there's levels you're playing like a beat em up game like reference switch of rage all those like games and sometimes we even have like mario kart in the boss battle we have like rod rash uh we have some moments that we reference like sonic of course uh, <laughs> um metroid <laughs> there's, like uh, even metroid um we 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 really try to get the most of uh, all this variety keeping the still a pixel rip game um but um there's castlevania donkey kong, donkey kong. <laughs> man we can the list can go can right. keep going but, uh star fox <laughs> and so uh, star, star fox yeah <laughs> The 90s, so, uh, the, the 1995 is the era where we had super, uh, the, the consoles going like uh, evolving from the 2D to the 3D. It was like pushing the limits of the hardware. We had the fight with Sega Genesis and Nintendo. It was, um, there were, it was, um, a really, uh, really hard to choose actually which yeah. games to. <laughs> and there's some like surprises many, that we, yeah, there's some surprises that we haven't shown in any, any pictures or, vid or videos yet. So. You'll, you guys will see. Yeah, yeah. this definitely sounds like every yes. single game I used to love playing uh, so far. <laughs> sounds like the majority of like the most iconic like 16, 32-bit games um, mm -hmm. have a uh, reference. So, man, that is... Oh, I yeah. cannot mm -hmm. wait to play this. I haven't played it yet myself, so I'm, I'm so we, excited. <laughs> More surprises. Today, so now that the game is out, you guys are going to be able to see all the other games. Um, but we don't want to spoil it, but there is uh, much more than what we said here. 
Mm-hmm. No, I'm not in Florida. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you had him at Castlevania. That's. <laughs> yes. Castlevania. We have turkeys. We have turkeys in the castle. We have turkeys in the castle. <laughs> <laughs> you have yeah, the, you have the wall turkey. That's wonderful. We bet who who finds the turkey. It's a really well hidden. Pedro hide the turkey. Even we in the game couldn't find the turkey for like a month. Uh, I didn't. I didn't tell anyone. I didn't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome. there was two yes. turkeys, and the other day we yeah, discovered yeah, yeah. there was another turkey. It was incredible. And then, <laughs> yeah, I doubt it. Yeah, you guys are gonna find it today. Try I to find the turkey. The, I whispered to right. the idols and said, "Hey, can you do? Can you make a turkey for me?" Okay, then he made it, and then I hid it, and then I think one month later, Irma hadn't spoken a word about it, and I was like, "I think she still haven't." find it she's still haven't found it <laughs> and then like two months later and two months later I, I said did you find the turkey and she was like what turkey <laughs> and then she yes. went and, and played the game the, the, the whole level like three times <laughs> That's awesome. Because I was so excited because we spoke we spoke about the turkey and I was like, oh my god, we need to have turkeys, it's Castlevania. And and then he yes. put in the turkey in, and I was so excited he said that is a turkey. What I have to find it? This is amazing. I was so glad we actually got to put this. It sounds silly, but the who plays Castlevania know this is important. Oh yeah. Core feature while I can. Yes. <laughs> it's not Castlevania without the turkey. So next up, uh, we've got Ryan from the VR grid. Go ahead, take it away, Ryan. All right, so your last kind of little statements kind of uh, really helped answer this question. But in Pixel 1989, you had a lot of hidden collectibles that were really hard to find. Now, you touched on this turkey, but are there others in this game that are super hard to find as well? We have um, we we have uh, not collectibles in this game, but we have uh, some Easter eggs. We had we had hidden uh something in the game <laughs> i can't say what it is but yeah. when you uh, <laughs> there are some achievements uh things you can find that's gonna be like achievement but there's some um there is something hiding in the game that when you see and then you see when you find all of them you may be gonna realize what it is but we don't want to spoil it yet <laughs> excellent so but there, there are there some are yeah, there is some you, hidden you didn't, you didn't hear it here first <laughs> well, they gotta be hard to find because as a guy who already played through the campaign once, I don't think I found a single hidden secret. So mm-hmm. now I gotta dive back nice. in and play again. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I played through the entire first game without realizing that there was secret rooms, secret collectibles. And when I found out about that, when you guys held that contest, uh, I went back and got got the rest of them. So love little secrets like that. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that. It adds longevity to the game, where you can come back later on and have something to do way well after you beat it. So longevity that is, and uh, curiosity. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. So Betty, uh, you are up. Please oh. go ahead. Take it away. About how long of gameplay time would you say this game has? Which now is kind of an open-ended. I mean, if you were just to walk all, all the way through it, but now we've mentioned the turkey, so. <laughs> three months to find the turkey. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah that's another three months. Three months of gameplay added there for you. you will get right, right. <laughs> but how, how long? Uh, how many hours of gameplay would you say there is for this game? And then um, the other question to link to it is, and what do you think the price, or excuse me, and what will the, the price be for the PSVR if you don't want to share? <laughs> It's a good share. The game is out, right? So I'm not yeah, a PlayStation yeah, yet, but the game is it's gonna be the same price of every other platform. It's gonna be nineteen ninety nine. I wish we could say nineteen ninety five dollars, but it will be nineteen ninety nine. And we're gonna be doing bundles too, right? We're gonna be doing bundles with yeah. nineteen eighty nine. So you wanna talk oh, about the bundle? Sec. Yeah, Sorry. that's good. We're gonna have bundles uh, with so, nineteen eighty nine. Sorry, somebody, somebody, somebody. Sorry, somebody came in real life here. Uh, yeah. um, no, um, <laughs> so yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna be bundling the game on uh, on um, on uh, on on some on some platforms. Of course, we can't do that on the Quest because nineteen eighty nine is not coming out for the Quest yet. But uh, we're gonna be bundling the game on the on on all the other platforms. Oh, 
and having a, a bundle with a discount and things like that, right? Uh, uh, so you're, you'll be able to get 89 at a discount if you don't have it, if you buy them together. Uh, uh, and uh, so that, so we're, yeah, we're going to be doing that. That's so nice. They, they play kind of piece of like that. Uh, so the game, Sorry. the, the playtime. Uh, Sorry, guys. It's, uh, it's probably his son. He has a son too. Little one. Yes. So no. Sorry, guys. No. I, I, as I was talking, I, I, was, I was being poked on my knee as I was talking. That was really, really strange. It's okay. We can, uh, we can totally edit that out. So, uh, Ricardo, his son, Ricardo, his son is in the game too. Oh, yeah, he is. Ricardo, his son is in the game. Yeah, Excellent. yeah. Uh, the whole the whole team has uh, cameos <laughs> in the game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and no, I mean my son is not on the team. We... My, my 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 son is not on the team. He's he, he's, he's two years old. He's two. He's two. He's he's two years old. But uh, yeah, he's in the game as well. <laughs> um, so I, I just want to add as well. It looks like that 1989. In addition to the launch of this game, 1989 seems like it's getting a permanent price drop as well. Yes. It's oh yeah. Fourteen ninety nine. Yeah, fourteen fourteen ninety nine uh, permanent price drop exactly. Uh, so well, so that's a good time to pick it up as well. Absolutely. It's Everyone just who to has warm it up. up yet, I highly recommend doing that asap when the mm -hmm. price changes. It is totally worth that much. It is worth more than. Oh, that. and I think yeah. I think she asked about the length of the game. Did you do you want me to? Oh yeah, the you length can of the game. How long do you think? How long does it take? Ah, yeah, so it depends on it depends on the person playing, but what we have watched it uh, through the playtest, uh, it's kind of around four hours long, oh. three hours and a half, four hours long. It, it depends on the player for sure. But some people may take uh, four hours and a half, five, but depends. Uh, some people like to explore. Some people are, are like to go running, speed running. And, and mm -hmm. so it depends on the player, but it's yeah. our average. It's significant. Three yeah. hours, four hours, three hours and a half, four hours, uh, four hours, I would say. That's yeah, it's significantly longer. It's significantly longer than the than the first game. Uh, uh, and and it has it has uh, it has two extra levels, but the levels are also more rich and there's more more stuff happening. You know, so. Yeah, 1989 nice. had four levels. Uh, this one has six. We have six levels, um, so it's a little bit longer too. Excellent. And Thank yeah, of you. course, with the secrets, that'll add more. <laughs> um, I know, I'm so alert. excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've got another question for you, um, for Anna, actually. Uh, you've been known as a leader and a role model in, uh, for women in, game, in the gaming industry, which we have tons of respect for. We, we love to see that, you know, anyone and everyone, there's a place for them to come and, and be in this industry. Um, I wanted to know, you know, now that this is your second entry, what new advice have you learned that you can give to those who are also aspiring to follow in your footsteps? Thank you, first of all. I, I feel like and I have a responsibility in that I'm a model. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, I think um, what I learned the most uh, through this last project, you mean the last, so 1995 compared to 1989, um, I think I learned more about working with more people. I think that's what I'm learning the most because 1989, it, it was me. So if I had an idea or something crazy, I'll be in my room, I'll be, I'm just going to make it. And and now with the team, I, I, I'm, I'm learning, constantly learning. I'm not going to say I already learned because it's, it's a process. And I have been learning and trying to improve that to think, okay, what can my team do uh, better? How can I pass this idea to the team? How can the team participate? Um, and, and doing things like this, bring the team to meetings and doing and, and interviews and shows. I want, I want the team to feel more part of this, uh, project. It's not a nice project anymore. It's a team project. So that's how I, uh, that's what I think it, it's what I, I would like to, I'm involving and I'm, I'm learning through 1995, um, to make a game better with, uh, together with the team and how to better creative direct, right? Because before I used to do a little bit of all the rules. So in the game, I was kind of like doing everything. <laughs> and, and now uh, with Arvory, with the team, like I, I can focus more uh, how, okay, how to improve, how to be a better director and, 
and sometimes I have to control myself. Don't do things because the first step, like, I'm just going to make it. And I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Who in the team can make it better, right? <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, I think it's something I'm improving day by day. It's, uh, it's great to have uh, mm-hmm. actually people you can share and divide your work. And, and before I had to even like pitch and do the company stuff. Now I have Avery doing, uh, Avery has the deal of the bureaucratic delivery. So also all that stuff I had to do before, not just the game. Uh, uh, meetings with investors, all that stuff, right? So it's a lot of, um, it's great to be able to share uh, these responsibilities with um, uh, talent people. So I don't know what, I, what you, you ask more things, right? Sorry, I talk a lot. It's going to be <laughs> no, hard no, to edit. edit that was this. great. <laughs> that, was, that was perfect. Um, but, you, um, as well as the entire team, are a huge inspiration to us. So we just want to yes. say you guys keep it going. Uh, we really appreciate everything yeah, yeah. you do. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Gaming, Thank you so much. VR, and for artwork and just having fun and being good at it too. It means a lot. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank and you. thank you so much for thank you so much for giving us the possibility to do something like this. Uh, I mean, uh, getting the VR community together, getting the word out about games is not easy, right? Especially for us, we're in Brazil. I mean, we're far away. So being able to sit on a couch and talk to people and see people and 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 and, and seeing this, what you guys made here, is incredible. So uh, thank you yeah. so much for yeah. that. No problem. I mean, this is for uh, us. These guys uh, are amazingly yeah. talented artists. These are the best that artists that Rec Room has to offer, and uh, yeah, it's it's just wonderful being around this community. And you know, it's exciting to see how we're all going to grow together, and you know how the future things will change. Um, we are definitely all going to be in this together, doing our part, and see this, uh, see how this changes. It's going to be a wonderful journey. Yeah. And we do this for you. Yeah. Just because we love Thank what you, you guys do. That we do this for you. No, yeah, Thank it's, it's serious me. because we, we can yeah. we can make the we can make the best game we can. But uh, if people don't know about it, it won't be played, right? So the right. the way that pe- the word can get out is through things like this, you know, which yeah. is the community driving it and all that is very important. So we're really happy about this. We are we are honored to be here and having this. Is all created from the game, and this is an honor. This is an unforgettable celebration. And thank you so much for you guys rec- making it possible for us to be together here, even if we are and you know, do things like celebrate. Uh, it, it it it's it's worth all the hard work we put in the pro- project. Um, we know you've had about five games planned in total, with 1989, 1995. Of course, those are done. Uh, but what about 1978, 1983, or when will it be time to party like it's 1999? Um, is there any chance you can give us a hint towards which year you'll be doing after 1995, or will there be an option to choose at the end like last time? Uh, <laughs> I mean, we 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 haven't an, we haven't announced. Yeah, yeah, we can, we can. Uh, we we haven't announced yet uh, the. We haven't announced yet the the next one, so stay tuned. But uh, uh, they will be, they'll all be very very the same craziness, the same time traveling, uh, nostalgic possibilities, right? Uh, just different eras and different genres and different things that that you can they'll be able to 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 see and do, right? So uh, it's always really interesting because um both it's not just the game genre you have to look at that time period as well like the 90s were very different from the 80s of the of the first game right the 70s was were very different uh from from both of those and then 1999 has that turn of the century almost feel you know and uh, i think the the real world changes a lot but the games change tremendously right so it's it's always interesting to explore uh, but we haven't announced it yet Okay. Well, we can't wait to see we what the say next that, one is. Um, we can say that the the three, like you said, five episodes. So we released mm. 1989, 1995. So the next ones will be either 1978, 19, 1999. Yeah. For do it. So <laughs> we don't. We can't say which one. But, mm-hmm. um, is that the next episode? So it's not going to be chosen like the 1989 at the end, or can you no, not say? It? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, the end is a little bit different in this game. Yeah, like it, okay. it, it doesn't have that voting thing. No, sorry, <laughs> you like understood. 
<laughs> but but we we do have a ranking from the choice from the first game, so <laughs> we there's that to oh, consider. <laughs> we already have I the do. data of all the years, so we know we uh, the favorites. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, the, I actually didn't even think about that. So, um, well, that's wonderful. Um, but uh, finally, uh, we've got some questions from others around the community, um, as well as uh, Noctado here, and we'd like to ask you those, if, we, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Of course. Uh, yeah, so my question is, uh, is there any leads in the game that may hint towards another appearance or Nicola D. Green from the first. Game. <laughs> yeah, if there's any leads, if there are any, if there are any hints towards towards Nicola's or her story in this game. Yeah, I mean, so it's the same. What do you What do you think? It's the same world, right? I mean, maybe <laughs> we won't we won't spoil we won't spoil it. <laughs> I mean, it's good answer. Good answer. <laughs> it, it, it's be, it, <laughs> it, it, pay attention. Pay, at, yeah. <laughs> pay attention. Pay attention. And 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 I mean, it's been a few years, right? She's no, maybe she's no longer that young. And but yeah, uh, pay attention. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Um, so we've also got one from uh, Mr. Sonic from our Discord, and he says, uh, "How can we expect this game to shake things up from the last one?" And you've already mentioned um, that there are, you know, more interactive objects in this time around. Um, is there anything else, maybe, and you don't have to spoil anything you don't want to, but is there anything else uh, in, that you can describe in ways that are different from 1989? The biggest difference in the game, it's, of course, the narrative. Uh, much better narrative now. We work in, 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 the, in depth. The characters, the story with Dot and David, and like we never did before. Or now that we have Barbara in the team. But I think uh, to add to that as well, uh, in 1989, uh, a, a, a big portion of the game happens in one environment, which is the classroom, right? You do go to the playground area but uh, and, the, and the director's office, but the huge portion of the game happens in the classroom. Whereas this one, uh, each level is uh, in a different environment. There are multiple game. There are many more, much more variety in the games that are being referenced as well. It's almost like each level is its own mini game right so in that respect we had we, like anna said we had more resources and a, a, a dedicated team from start to finish whereas with the first game she was uh, bootstrapping it in the beginning and 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 doing it uh, University. Uh, you know, yeah so 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 i mean for the last stretch of, of 89 she was she was with us she was at Arvory. we were we we had a team but uh uh by then the game was already really evolved right uh whereas this one we went from scratch with the same team like focused you know so so it's uh so there's that um that aspect then we can bring a lot more to the game right yeah well, i, I must think say... it's uh, 19 so i just uh, a compliment is 99 is like you i was cooking something for the first time like you're cooking something you put ingredients and you try it out and then 1995 okay we know what is good about this recipe let's let's focus on that and yeah, and then it was long, and I had experience. I could go crazy with ideas and experience many things. Is like us cooking a chili and putting spicy, putting peppers <laughs> while I was cooking. And in 1995, we had said, "Okay, this is what is good about this game. Let's focus on that." Kind of that. That's what, what I see. That's the evolution. Yeah, and I think I th I, th I think people I think I, th <laughs> I think people are gonna be very very surprised with the. How how much how evolved the story is. Uh, Barbara is a, a genius and a great uh, writer, um, and uh, the the story has evolved so much. The first one was really funny and did have a story, but it was more on on the background. It wasn't as cohesive. It wasn't as uh, so. This time it's an actual story. You get involved with the characters, and it's and it's hilarious. It's really funny. So so I think people will appreciate that. Well, that'll be really interesting to see with a, a deeper story that's fleshed out. And I must say, you guys did a really great job um, with the first game because you mentioned that you spent a lot of time in the classroom. And I was thinking about it and I was like, wait, you were in the classroom a lot, a lot but because I was so immersed not only in the, game, <laughs> the mini games, I forgot how much time you actually spent in the classroom because mm -hmm. I, I remember the you know, the TV and the gear kid. And I was so focused on that that I completely forgot that I was in the classroom for so long. So uh, yeah. really awesome to hear that this has new environments that kind of shake, uh, just add more to the game. 
Um, we've also got um, a question from Delirium Drew, the game cat, and he says, uh, what <laughs> is your favorite PS1 and N64 game? Um, and this Ooh. goes for the entire group. I can, I can, <laughs> I, I can answer Shenmue. that. <laughs> uh, for, for, in, well, for me, for me, PS1 was, for me, PS1 was Final Fantasy VII. Yes. And, yeah. uh, Did you play the remake? Uh, I gotta ask. Not, not yet, not, not yet, not yet. <laughs> I, I, beat it. I, I beat it, it's incredible. That's my favorite game of all time. So. Yeah, I really want to, I really want to play it. I haven't played it yet. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, so Final Fantasy VII for PS1. And N64, I would have to say Ocarina of Time. I don't know. I, don't, I, don't, uh, I couldn't say anything one. else. So, yeah. But that's for I, me. Yeah, um, I, it's hard for me to answer because I had an N64, so it, it, it's harder to answer. Um, but I had so many good memories playing four-player games because I had three, three brothers. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I just did. You <laughs> leveled up. You leveled up on the show. That's going in the blooper reel. <laughs> uh, nah. uh, yeah, but in this, uh, I remember it was the first console that was for control. So I was so excited with my brothers because we we growing up playing together and having so much fights because it's four people <laughs> and all the consoles we could play maximum two. Right? So when we had Nintendo sixty four, I was like, wow, we can play all there. <laughs> so I remember the, the best moments was playing Double Seven, Golden Eye. Uh, oh, I knew you were going to say that. It, 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 golden, <laughs> it, 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 oh, Golden Eye was a huge for me as well. Golden Eye, and then we play a lot of Perfect Dark. Did you ever play Perfect oh, Dark? Oh, yeah. That was oh, yeah. gorgeous. Mario yeah. Party. Both of those. Party. Oh, my God. Mario Party. Yeah, Mario, Mario Party. Party. Yeah. So I know fun. what you mean, though. So There's, just too many. Yeah. There's just too yeah, many. Golden, yeah, Golden Eye, I would, I, would have to, I would have to put on par with the current of time for me, Golden Eye. Yeah, I, Golden I'm, Eye was amazing. I'm going to say Golden Eye. And oh. also, I met the, 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 the game designer of Golden Eye in 2014. Oh. And he played wow, with nice. Rift wow. at the time. Yeah, long oh, time wow. ago. That and, must have been an experience. And, and I, I hope he can play the game now because he, when he played that point, he commented about the controller and how he wanted to hold, hold controller in his hand and actually hide the game, the, the game Boy with his hand under the desk with the tracking. <laughs> but at the time, there was no tracking. This is like DK1, DK2. It was DK2. <laughs> so I remember he said that we should hide my Game Boy with my hand, not. And I hope he played oh, the yeah. game afterwards because his idea is now possible. And, and yeah, awesome. Golden Eye, for sure. Golden Eye and Crash Bandicoot. And if they um, got, uh, guys from oh, the team want to say to my talk. Yeah, may I ask the team? Uh, like, did you guys have a favorite like PS1 and N64 game? Yeah, definitely. The PlayStation 1 was Crash Bandicoot 2. No doubt, I played that with my sister all the time. And the Nintendo 64 is Mario Kart for me. I just Excellent. played that all the time. <laughs> Even though I, when it came out, I was, I mean, I think I was a baby, but I played it later <laughs> and it was so addicting. <laughs> addicting yeah. I hear that. Um, you were so young. You? I second that. <laughs> um, wait, wait. Uh, my, I think my favorite games were uh, Banjo and Kazooie. Uh, oh, I was hoping. So I, I think it defined. That. Yeah, I think it defined a lot what I like as a game designer. And uh, Zelda Majora's Mask also for sixty four. For I didn't play as much uh, PS one as I did uh, Nintendo sixty four. But I think I would say Parappa the Rapper for. Nice. <laughs> for oh PS1. wow! Yeah. yeah. All in the mind. <laughs> if you wouldn't yeah. test me. Yes, how about you? <laughs> I was actually a Sega kid. Uh, I had a Sega Saturn. And nice. <laughs> the game I played the most at the time was Rayman. Ah. Ah, cool. Yeah, I have I to try. I, I have a I have a funny uh, Final Fantasy VII story with Blanco actually because we were childhood friends, uh, and uh, I got the my my parents bought me the PlayStation One. Uh, I got Final Fantasy VII, and then we were at vacation at uh, my grandmother's house, uh, and so and they bought it to they bought the PlayStation without the memory card because they didn't know you had to buy the memory card. <laughs> right. Um. So Blanco and I would play Final Fantasy VII 
and we left the video game plugged in because he couldn't save, right? Um, and and we would like say nobody touch this, and, and it was a really it was a really janky setup. Like the cable was like run through doors and shit like that. And then somebody like unplugged it, and, we, and one morning we wake up, we wake up super excited to go play, and we go and it's like unplugged. Yeah. And so what we did is we started the game again. We started the game all over and and played a, again like for hours and hours. And then when, when we had to leave to go home from vacation, we had to start all over again because I still didn't have a memory card. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, I took forever I to that finish that game. Too. <laughs> I, I beat. There was a game called Heart of Darkness, um, which was uh, made yeah. by. Oh yeah, I know what you're uh, talking this, about. He's the same developer that just made uh, uh, Pixel. I'm sorry, uh, made Paper Beast. Um, I for, I can't remember his name for some reason, but um, yeah, I I left my PS One on for an entire month just to beat yeah. that game because I didn't have memory. Yeah, yet. <laughs> it was, it's funny because I have the same story as Plinio. I have very fond memories of playing Crash Bandicoot with my sister and my cousins, and that's really defined my childhood. I can can I say that? Definitely one of the most important uh, PS1 games to kick things off. Um, how about you? Uh, what would be your favorite PS1 and N64 game? Me? Oh. Yes. Uh, yeah. well, actually, uh, no, well, Ricky told uh, that, that story before. I didn't have a PlayStation and a, a Nintendo 64, so I went over to his place to play. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Basically, uh, his favorite games were my favorite games. We played a lot of uh, Final Fantasy VII uh, mm -hmm. at his house, and when he came over, he would bring the PlayStation to my house so we could binge the whole weekend uh, with him and my brother uh, beside me. And um, and then, obviously, on Nintendo 64, I would have to uh, uh, agree as well. Uh, Ocarina of Time. Uh, I even uh, later on, I even downloaded an emulator uh, to to play it and be able to like play, play it again and on PC. And uh, oh man, I almost even uh, bought a 3DS only for that game. Uh, just I'm just that. really hoping they would uh, port it to Switch. That would be just uh, an amazing day for me. <laughs> Yeah, it was always an advantage having that friend. If you had a PlayStation, having the friend that had the N64 and vice versa, yeah. and you would just <laughs> you'd spend the weekend hanging out and stuff and playing video games. Also, I'd say that close behind would be Shadows of the Empire, just because uh, we were oh, yeah. in our worst. Oh, man, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, did, I forgot to mention that one. Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so, Ryan, uh, from the VR Grid, you have a question you can ask for them? Yeah, um, I just saw recently that Perp Games had tweeted that uh, you guys are getting a physical release for both 1989 and 1995. Can you tell us anything more about that? <laughs> uh, yeah, so we we yeah we we've been we've been talking to Perp Games uh, uh, for a while now, and uh, we we're actually coming with uh, 1989 as a physical release. Uh, that will be a limited uh, a limited run of a special edition that's going to be sold through their website. Uh, and then for 1995, we're actually uh, gonna bring the game like a full uh, physical uh, a copy release as well. But that's not gonna be right now. It's it's gonna take a little bit still because the process is is a little bit uh, longer, right? So we're but uh, keep keep your your eyes out because that's coming very soon. Uh, so more information soon. But yeah, we're gonna do both. Um, and then, and we're gonna have special edition copies with extra stuff, and so it's gonna be really cool. Yeah, that sounds oh, nice. excellent. I'm gonna have to snag yeah. one of those. And uh, physical edition, editions yeah. are something we hear about so often. So I think um, you guys will be pleased with the results. This, this is usually a huge boost for games because we have so many physical yeah. edition collectors out mm. there, and uh, I will definitely yeah, the, keep my eye out for that collectors or yeah. special the, edition. Yeah, the guys are, at Perp Games are, are amazing, and, and they have a lot of experience bringing... They already brought a lot of uh, PSVR games to physical copies, Definitely. so so uh, we're working with them, and it's going to be really cool. Excellent. Awesome. Um, did, uh, Rob, did you have a question you'd like to ask the team? Uh, so everybody in here, there's a whole bunch of creative people. So what I always like to ask creative people is, you know, when were you bitten by the radioactive spider? Right. Yeah, what I mean by that is, you know, um, like for example, uh, just that movie where Pamela Travers was trying to work at Disney's to make Mary Poppins or whatever, and she had some white horse that came into her mind that was an organizing force when her family was all disheveled, and that was Mary Poppins, right? Um, so for me, it's it won't be 
making a movie or anything, but I laid on the floor as a little kid and I started to draw. And uh, when I found out I could take the inside of my head world and put it out for other people to see and show them the cartoon that I watched in my own mind for my own pleasure, I, I, I thought I had magic. At that point, I had magic, right? That's my getting bit by a radioactive spider moment. I, I turned into Wonder Rob instead of regular Rob, right? Um, so <laughs> my question is, I love to ask creative people that question. Do you remember when the art spirit happened yeah. to you? For me, it's when I, I put some video game music. I like to listen to like music. And and then I go into this zone and I can just yeah. listen to this music and I like being inside Unity. And uh, there is this point where you are uh, on that flow and forget about time. And that's for me, this, for the moment that I love the most to be creative is when I have this moments in Unity and I just, just know that when you have no um, pressure, you just put in the music, you go in the zone and I try to. Um, like I said, it's like magic. You you having the ideas and just putting out. And it, it is magic. It's, it's exactly magic. Mm -hmm. It's when you actually I'm, forget about time and and you just you mm. just flow through these uh through ideas and you just when you see like mm. ten hours past and you just um I think each one has mm. um um a a, a, a style yeah. but for me it's when I go to this uh, zone. Listen video games like in uni. <laughs> yeah, Does anyone for, remember for, when at first? <clears throat> yeah, for me, I, I I remember exactly. And uh, uh, for me, what the moment I was bit when I was a kid, uh, and and like understood what creativity was, it actually has to do with Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, okay. Uh, I. I'm a huge Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> nerd, and I uh, I'm actually still I actually still play as a uh, as and I, I DM a lot and, and all of that. Uh, but uh, I so I bought this in Brazil. They they came out with a box set. It was called uh, it was a simplified version. It was official like D and D TSR blah blah. But it, it was um this was before Wizards of the Coast right and uh, it was this official box that was called Dragon Quest which was a simplified D&D &D, uh, uh, thing okay uh, and i was 9 years old and i i, I still have the the D20 the D20 that i use today is still the same D20 that came in that box yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah 100% 100% like creating worlds traveling to those worlds and having other people especially visit those worlds like that's that comes from dungeons and dragons for me so that's where it started for me for sure and uh so, ricardo so <laughs> barbara uh, blanco fabio matthias pedro plinio thank you guys so so much for joining us today it's really been our pleasure to have you here with us chatting and thank you for sharing all this information on pixel rip we're so excited it's out today Everybody, make sure to go pick it I up. I can't wait to um, play it. Yeah, we. You know, is there is there anything else uh, you you'd like to say? And you know, make sure you plug your social media. Where can we follow you on social media? And um, just where else we can find you? We have a very active uh, Pixel Ripped Twitter. We also have uh, social media channels for Arvory uh, at Arvory Immersive and at Pixel Ripped. Uh, please follow those. You'll get news about uh, uh, updates, news about uh, stuff that we're we're doing, and 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 more stuff. Uh, uh, so please follow those. Uh, please uh, go out there and check out the game. I'm sure you all love it and 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 support us and 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 get the word out if you like the game. Yep. Tell people about it because that's one of the biggest challenges with indie publishing, right? Is getting the word out, right? Especially for VR, because sort of mainstream video game media doesn't cover VR very much unless you're Half Life Alex, right? Uh, um, <laughs> but uh, so 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 yeah, get get the word out if you like the game. Please, it, it will help us a lot. So so yeah, so yeah, I, I guess that's share the message. Share with us uh, share yeah, with us your sh experience. Uh, yeah, please tell us what you like, what you don't like as well. I mean, we're still we're still actively adding. Yeah, we're still actively adding stuff to the game, adding and and we're we're not like just launching it and 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 leaving it. We're still working. So tell us what tell us what you think. Tell us what to add and and stuff like that. And we'll and we're still if it's possible, we're still working on it. So uh, thank yeah, you very much. And, and and including the next uh, 
Patches. Yeah, yeah, and in, in, in updates and patches, exactly. And uh, I would just like to say once more, I know I said this about three times or four times already, but this, th th what you guys did here is absolutely amazing. We're, we're completely, yeah. it's completely incredible. Like, uh, there's a, a, a spaceship from the game flying around. There's the <laughs> Cyber Lord's castle. Like, uh, everything is here, and you guys did this. Uh, it's unbelievable. It's amazing. Yeah. So thank well, you very awesome. much this, for this opportunity. Well, thank you guys well, as well, and thank you to the entire team. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, you know, this uh, room will be opened up to the public as soon as this interview is over. So make sure you go into Rec Room, come check it out at the PSVR Chat Show. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you. Pixel Rip! 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 Pixel